The Real Magdalene, fiction based on a true visit to Roman basilicas, renunciation of worldly pleasures, and lives a life of hermeticism next to a momento mori skull to remind her of the transients of this realm. Giovanni Baglioni's Sacred and Profane Love. It is the depiction of Archangel Michael defeating profane love. Michael in between the devil and Cupid, the arrow of lust and desire, who is creating love spells and causing distraction from two star-crossed lovers who are destined to meet, but become distracted by third-party lusts, and Michael intervenes. And there it is. You are aware that you are being spiritually attacked in this space. You love Riley and you lust Aaron. Seeing this painting gives you comfort. The angels are handling it. If Archangel Michael is your handler, then that's all right by you. Judith, the widow who has a faith of fire. She overcomes the fear of the threat against Israel by ingratiating herself to Holofern, an Assyrian general who is leading his army to invade the Jewish people. Decreed by the evil king Nebuchadnezzar, she goes into the heart of the lion's den and beheads the general who is intoxicated and at his weakest moment. You believe the real story is that she intoxicate him with great sex and fine wine. It doesn't make any sense that she can just walk in while he was drunk and doesn't and it doesn't make any sense that he would get drunk alone, but nobody mentions that. She is covered. There are three different paintings of the beheading scene of Judith 13, 6 through 10 each depicting the moment when she has successfully beheaded the Assyrian general with her, with her loyal handmaiden by her side as assistance. She probably gave him a really good head, good enough to put him to sleep where he lays vulnerable to his own sword. She beheads him as to prevent a massacre against her family, her people, and she answers God's call to stop the evil persecution of her people. You wonder if Hordim could ever do good for the kingdom of God, and you find this pretty amusing that the answer is self-evident in these paintings. In fact, you pass through several versions of the scene of Judith, beheading the Assyrian general. In one description it reads, while the hand points to the head of Holofernes, the foot also points down to the elegant untied shoes. In the biblical text, it says her sandals ravished the eyes of Holofernes, and with these weapons the conqueror was conquered. Lust is indeed a weapon, perhaps a nice manicure and pedicure as well. You are irritated, you want to be alone, you know your polarity is spreading further apart, wider and wider, except this time you are sinking. The gravity of the world suddenly feels too heavy. You look up and observe. You realize the keys to heaven is in the center, and on the fringes are all the different creatures of creation trying to hustle their way in, perhaps by pleading, charm, coercion, whatever the case may be. You lay there, looking up and observing for quite some time. While observing the painting above, you realize that you are seeing what you can't see happening to you in this realm happening on the supernatural realm revealed on the fresco. Looking at chaos manifest through art ironically gives you a kind of peace amidst the supernatural storm because it is a validation of what cannot be thoroughly proven through the naked eye. If it feel like it's too much, do you feel like you're not enough when you feel like it's gonna take forever? Yeah, I swear I know what it's like. Feel alone at the end of the night Maybe you don't know it, but it gets better It's gonna be
think about people who are angry, who are suffering, who are in that pit of despair and angst, or on or or are at the jumping off point. Um, they could care less about happy love stories. They don't want any part of it. They want to be acknowledged in their pain. They want to see a mirror darkly, you know? So it's like the law of attraction in a way, like attracts like. So in a way, when we talk about journal pain into purpose, what we're really doing is mirroring for them what they feel on the inside by artistically expressing it and illustrating it on the landing page. Someone who hasn't been too close to be able to build that bridge from normal speak into our insider's jargon, right? Like shadow work, journal artism, yin yang, artist inspired journaling. Like these are just things that we could probably simplify. I like that either. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Just Ooh, cause I kind of like that. I kind of like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not trying to stifle your creativity, man. But as I wanted to be honest, I'm a graphic designer. This I'm <laughs> shooting in the blind. I'm shooting in the blind right now. This. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. And maybe we could change this one to the dark red. What do you think? Yeah production company we produce intimate and interactive artist showcases wow this is way better than my first oh, that bring audience and artists together through spoken word open mic nights readings and concert performances the tagline should be something related to this whole thing okay, okay. so something mm -hmm. about um to transform tragedy, we first embrace it, or something like that. Okay, I like that, I like that. In white with a pop of red, is it this or that? So I think once we get a little bit further, um, we'll be able to really then plug and play in terms of like making graphic cards, making infographics, like doing an ebook or putting together a quick this or that or a header for a video. It'll all be really easy once we all are like consistent and oh, I need to talk about this, but I'm talking about that at this channel, so I'm gonna tweak it slightly. You do not have to suffer in silence anymore. Friends between into fiction and inside of fiction, I think it's inside. Inside fiction. Yeah. So what, what's the difference? The difference is you're actually telling the truth inside fiction. A little too deep but like it's okay my mind okay the first fruit is the power to produce everlasting life from the book of life the last fruit is the power to know good and evil acts from divine matter you'll see how the latter fruit the power to know good and evil causes dissociation for the one who is who has obtained the newfound power of judgment without the fortitude of love to wield its power. Then Lucifer reasoned, if, if God's love for his creation is good, then love and the power to create more love is greater than knowledge, knowing what is good and evil. And so it would be wise to first bite from the fruit of life. I've kind of lived through that where I, I just threw kind of my religion away. And I think that's when I truly became a Christian. What I felt like at the time was God's love. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to go anywhere. I almost didn't want to be here anymore. And I didn't care who was going to suffer because I wasn't here anymore. So I do feel like that part of my life was, was evil, even though I wasn't doing anything to anybody else. It was just evil because it was absent of, absent of uh, God's love. Love is the hero's true desire in the villain's hidden desire. Channels in a campaign uh, time frame, let's just say July, all need to make sure that all of these areas are hit on at least once or maybe a couple of times. Wow, but, so good. Uh, Seeing reality.
you're going to start being able to reflect reality of what happened that day. Kind of like a scene, what you were right. By the way, you could label the title, you know, you know, this is just my personal title, but label your own folder and your own subtitle if you have it. And this is what you send to other editors for editing. Go, someone's monitoring who's um, answering customer complaints or you know the inbox or whatever or if we have the chat box because I know some websites have or some Facebook pages have that chat box that pops up that says hey if you have any questions or if you'd like you know such and such just start typing here so we don't have to have that right now um, but that would be something to maybe look at in the future well, that's going to get them to trust us. To like, oh, yeah, you don't mean no harm for me. I mean, yeah, I'm going to get triggered by your content, but you're talking about becoming anti-fragile and because we're going to be triggered anyway by the outside world. And that's what therapists do anyway. When you pay $150 an hour to see them, they're going to, if you're afraid of spiders, they're going to be, what are they going to do? They're going to have a jar with a spider in there somewhere in the corner of the room. You're going to be scared, but you're going to be okay. So like, why are we doing shadow work? It's same concept. You're inside to trigger yourself, but doing it, microdosing it, so you become eventually anti-fragile. And no one's going to know, and I'm not going to remember because I'm not sure what just happened. I know. I'm like, don't and click it in the meeting. Oh, <laughs> oh man. There's the, there's the other subconscious side, the evil villain in yes. all, us all. <laughs> Ever feel like you're alone when you're lost, but you're already Lie awake cause you can't dream